Hey guys, it's Carissa and welcome back to my YouTube channel Inky Fairy Designs. Today's Watercolor Wednesday and I've got a cute envelope and some brush lettering to share with you along with um, some coloring of some new stamps that are new to me. I just had to show you this packaging though. It came in this really cute pink bubble mailer with this sticker on the back that says, Admit it, you're smiling already. The company is Pink and Main and Michelle contacted me and asked if I wanted to try some of their stamps out and I said, of course course. Uh, so uh, she sent me a couple stamps, three sets out of, um, I sent her like some ideas of stamps that I'd like to work with. She also sent me this cute bling that they carry. They also carry some stamp, um, some paper I noticed. So the first set she sent me is called uh, Perfect Blend and I think that's from their latest release. The second one is Wild About You and I just adore the fox and that bear. And then the last set is the one I'm going to be using today, and it's called Magical Unicorns. And yeah, I saw that set, and I was like, I got to have it. I actually saw Instagram shortly after she contacted me, and I was like, okay, I want that set. So I'm so glad that it was one of the ones that she chose for me as well. She also sent me the matching dyes, which as you could see, they're pink, which is so cute. Um, I don't have any other pink dyes, so I mean, pink in May, and it's pretty unique. So I was really excited to get started. I sped up this portion a little bit. I am doing watercoloring, so I'm still testing out this My Favorite Things ink, Extreme Black. I haven't decided if I like it better than my go-to VersaFine Onyx Black, so I'm going to try it for a little bit longer and see. So I, I wanted to test the stamping before I went to my envelope, and first impression stamping was fantastic. I don't take the time to like prepare my stamps or anything. So when it stamps perfectly the first time, I'm happy. Now, this second stamp that I picked from the set, it, ha it was damaged. And so you can see that the little unicorn horn top didn't, like the poly photopolymer just didn't get pressed right or whatever, however they make it. It had an error. And so I contacted Michelle and she's sending me a brand new stamp set. So no worries, I don't think it's any reflection on Pink and Main. It was just one of those fluky things, and if it's going to happen to anybody, it's going to happen to me. Just let me just say that. So I've got my envelope here. I am doing it a little bit different this week where I am using some Fabriano hot press paper that I uh, cut to my envelope size using the We Are Memories envelope maker, and um it's 140 pounds, so it's a little bit thicker than I think would be best for this type of, you know, envelope making. So I'd like to pick up some 90 pound and try this if I intend to do it again. But this is what I had on hand, so this is what I'm using. And I'm using uh, Daniel Smith watercolors, and I actually have all the colors that I used today listed in the description below. Uh, I pulled out my colors. I don't know if you saw that in, in the beginning when I started, but I have my little palettes or my little, not palettes, what are they called? Um, pans off to the side. So I know exactly what colors I'm using and I wanted to keep it simple. So I started by adding just a little bit of shading to the unicorn. I want her to be white, um, but you still want to add some shading, even if it's going to be white, because in real life, there are shadows everywhere. And even if it's white, there's going to be either some gray tones, blue tones, purple tones, whatever. There's going to be some shadows on whatever is white. So it, just to create that depth, definitely want to add some shadows to whatever I'm coloring white. Then I couldn't decide on her little mane, and so I ended up going with like a purpley pink. I was torn between this really pretty turquoise that I have and this color, and I went with this color first, and then off to the side, I was like kind of mixing colors, and I saw that those two colors mixed beautifully. So I ended up adding just a few drops of that turquoise into her mane, and I really like how it turned out. However, later in the video, you'll see when I color the other unicorn, uh, I, do it a, I do a wet and wet technique, and I like the way that came out better. So I started out with a dry into wet, I guess, technique, if you want to call it that, where I am 
coloring on a completely dry image and then I bring in water to kind of move it out. So for her little horn, I brought in that um, Gonzai Tambi gold watercolor set. Uh, I actually forgot I had this. Oh my goodness. I forget I have tons of supplies. I don't know if you guys are like that, but I, I was like going through my watercolor. Um, I have a shelf of watercolors and I was like, oh, I forgot I had these and why I was going through them because I saw these on, um, I was kind of doing a little online shopping and I saw these and I thought, oh, I want to get those. And then I had this little voice in the back of my head say, I think you already have those. So I looked and I did. And now I'm deciding if I want a different company's set of gold. Um, I can't remember. It's the little circle ones. Um, but a lot of people use those for lettering anyway. So a little side note there. Um, now I'm coming in with the background and I'm doing my, I love wet and wet. So I don't know why I did the dry thing earlier on the unicorn because I really love the wet and wet technique. I like how loose it is. I like how organic it is. You know, you can just drop colors in like here I started with a Prussian blue and then I added imperial purple into it and it just bursts and blends and does all these pretty things on its own and that's what I love about watercolors and I think that's what um, a lot of you who have messaged me or email me on Facebook or whatever and have said that you love watercolors you love the look of watercolors you want to try watercolors I think this is what draws you to it you can tell me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think this is what does it for you because it's what does it for me. And so, yeah, it, doing the dry into, it just, I don't know, it, it works. Some people make it work, but it's a little bit kind of not my normal go-to. So it looks awkward to me, but yeah, this background turned out beautiful. And then I um, just started splattering some of the colors to get a little bit more texture into that background and just kind of brighten up or just add some color around to the other areas since I was keeping it really simple and concentrated around the stamping. And then I felt like the clouds needed a little bit more um, along with the unicorn. So I brought in some neutral tint just to give a little bit more shading to the clouds and the unicorn. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. So while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and move into the lettering. I think if I can just stop here. <laughs> and you can see I do come in sometimes with a paper towel and um, like kind of sop up like extra. If I get too much color, I can bring in that paper towel and take it away. So here I go with the lettering. I actually stamped that other little unicorn sitting down because I think it's adorable and I didn't care that it didn't stamp because I know I'm going to get a new one that's going to fix that and I could just draw in those lines anyway. So I mixed up some colors. This is the Sleeping Beauty uh, Genuine Turquoise color. That's the, the bluish green, obviously, turquoise. And then the other color is the Ultramarine um, Ultramarine, what's it called? I'm looking for it here, and of course I'm not picking it up right away. Rose of Ultramarine. And I'm using my, uh, the same watercolor brushes that I use to color, which is the Silver Black Velvet. This is the first time that I've tried lettering with them. I usually use a water brush, but I wanted to push myself and challenge myself, and so I decided to try like a regular paintbrush and um, it worked really well I think and I um, mixed the colors so to watercolor with pan watercolors um, to watercolor brush watercolor um, you want to mix on a palette off to the side and get it really really watery so put a lot of pigment down move it around mix it up with your brush add a lot of water, make it, you know, as liquidy as you can. And then you'll be able to pick that color up with your brush and letter with it. And it'll, you'll get a lot smoother look than if you try to pick up the pigment from 
your pan and try to letter with that. So that's just a little thing that I've learned as I am kind of playing around with the watercolor brush lettering this past month. And I've done it before in the past, but I'm really focusing on it this past month. So now I'm coming in and coloring the unicorn. And there's where I'm telling you, where I told you earlier, I went in with the wet and wet for the hair. And I love how it turned out so much better than the other one. But I wasn't going to go back and change that. I mean, it's still cute. And I, I, I just love these little unicorns. I really do. I can't wait to color up the other stamp set pink and main sent me. So I'm just adding a little bit of shading onto the unicorn. Same colors that I used on the envelope. I kind of wanted it to be cohesive because I'm mailing this out uh, to uh, another person participating in the Good Mail Monday. And I think it's cute that, you know, she opens it up and there's a little something that she can keep um, if she wants um, to as part of the um, Good Mail Monday. I just think it's fun to add a little bit of uh, something personal in there. And then I realized that it was still wet and I was trying to outline it and kind of fill in those lines and it was bleeding. So I had to dry it with my heat tool, which I do a lot. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. Um, I do dry my layers with a heat tool if I'm going into a layer right next to it. If I'm going to watercolor, like the clouds are separate, if I was going to watercolor something completely separate from what I just watercolored, I'm not going to heat set that because I'm not worried about any bleeding happening that I don't want to. But if I'm going to work in an area right next to another area that I just watercolored, I will usually heat set it so that it doesn't um, blend where I don't want it to. So I wanted to again kind of keep this little cohesive theme going with the gold in the uh, unicorn's horn so I'm just doing a little shadow outline on my lettering and I had never done this before uh, but I've seen it done a lot and I really love the look and so I thought now's the time to try it if ever I'm going to try it and so I tested it of course off to the side to make sure that I wanted to do it and then I liked it and went ahead and outlined the rest of it. So I'm just kind of adding a little gold shadow off on the right side of all of the letters. And I think it turned out really cute. I love this saying, be a unicorn in a field of horses. And I actually looked on Pinterest for unicorn quotes because I knew I wanted to hand letter a quote, which is kind of what I've been doing this whole month. And that matched the stamps because I wanted to use the stamps on it and color and I just thought it turned out really really cute I just I, but I think this one is my favorite stamp in the whole set the little unicorn sitting there just kind of like hanging out so cute and then on the envelope I don't think I stamped it I don't know but I stamped never stop believing in the magic of your dreams on the front of the envelope I don't know if I if I did that already so I'm just adding a little bit of a drop shadow underneath the unicorn. Um, again, I'm using the same colors that I used on the envelope, just kind of tying it all in together. And now I'm going out around the unicorn and adding a little bit of, of a background to it. Not too much because I didn't want it to kind of distract from the quote at the top, but I did add a little bit just because I wanted her to stand out a little bit more. And I think she's so cute. I love her cheeks. I love her little expression. These stamps are adorable. And then again, keeping with the theme, I am adding some splatters because I liked them. So here's some close-ups of the finished projects today. I had so much fun working on them and a big thanks to Pink and Main for enjoying what I do and sending me some of their product to try out today. I appreciate each and every one of you guys that watch my videos so much and I wanted to create a place where you can share your work with me. So I started a Facebook group where you can do that. You'll find a link in the description box below. If you're inspired by this video or any one of my videos, please come over there and share, me, share with me what you're making. 
Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. I'll have a link to more videos like this one here on the left. Definitely subscribe to my channel in the middle. Um, every comment that you leave, every thumbs up that you give me, every share of the video, every video that you watch just helps my channel grow, helps me to continue doing what I'm doing. If you like these videos and want to see more of them, please do that for me. Um, I will be back on Saturday with another Stamp Stash Saturday video. Until then, guys, just keep creating. Bye.